Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. We're in a series entitled Build Your Church. And I believe this series is prophetic. I believe not only is this series what we desire to do for the house of God, but I believe it's what we've been designed to do. I believe our greatest days are still in front of us. I believe no eye has seen, no ear has heard all that God has in store for us. And this morning, as we begin to pray and praise and worship online, we have an unusual amount of prayer requests for mental health, depression, oppression, suicidal thoughts, voices. And I believe I have a prophetic word for you this morning. Nehemiah chapter 6. When you're there, say I'm there. Beginning at verse number one, it says, Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshep and Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no more breach left therein. Though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshep sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one village in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it? and come down to you. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sword, and I answered them after the same manner, then sent Sanballat his servant unto me like manner, and the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, and wherein it was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith that, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildeth the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now it shall be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto them, saying, There are no such things done as you say they are, but you findeth these things in your own heart. For they are supposed to make us afraid, saying their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it may not be done. Now, therefore, God, strengthen my hands. Now, therefore, God, strengthen my hands. I want to preach to you a moment from the subject matter. We got work to do. Come on, put your board down. Lift those hands, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that as we are building your church, you strengthen our hands. Father, we curse every distraction. We silence every voice. We break every chain. We destroy every yoke by the power and the authority of your son, Jesus Christ. We serve notice to the enemy. We tell him his time is up. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. And all those that agree, give a big amen. Amen and amen. As you're taking your seats, look at your neighbor, tell them we got work to do.
About a year ago, I was being picked up by one of the young men that I was mentoring. It was in the middle of the summertime. I got into his vehicle, we began to ride down the street. And outside it was about 90 degrees and inside of his car it felt like it was 120. I said to him, do you have AC in your car? He said to me, yes, it's on. I said, my God, son, we need to get this thing checked out. We continued to drive and talk a little bit and it dawned on me that it was sweltering hot to an ungodly level in this vehicle. So finally, I cracked the window. He looked over and said, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm good. It's just, it is hot as Hades in this car. As I began to look at his dashboard, I realized there was a button called AC that had not been pressed. I reached to the dashboard I pressed the button and immediately the car cooled down. He looked at me with a look of shock and utter disbelief that there was something in his car he had not yet discovered that I had found. I said to him, have you not ever seen that button before? He said, to be honest with you, I never have. I said, come on, man, this is your car. I said, there are things you don't know about your own car. There are futures in this car that you have not discovered. And he said, I guess so. And as we continued to drive, the car continued to cool down and the suffering began to cease. As I thought about that story in preparation for this message, it dawned on me a lot of us are suffering because we have not activated features that are already on the inside of us. It, it dawned on me a lot of us are suffering because we have not enabled things that God has placed in us for the betterment of our livelihood. It dawned on me, as crazy as that story may seem, there are some of us that are going through a season of suffering simply because we have not looked at our spiritual dashboard and said, this is in need to be activated. And I wonder, is there anybody willing to do personal inventory on your spiritual dashboard right now to see what do you have that you're not using? Yeah. Nehemiah is an ordinary man. Nehemiah, as a matter of fact, is a cupbearer. He, he is the taster for those that are in position of authority, which simply means if someone is trying to poison a king or a queen or someone in, in authority, Nehemiah would be the one that drinketh of the cup first and die. He is an ordinary man, but oftentimes God will call ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Oftentimes God will call people who have no abilities that are activated and look at their spiritual dashboard and cut on the AC. Oftentimes God will look at you and your situation and your circumstance and put a spiritual battery in your back so that not only will you endure, but you will thrive in the season of life that you're in. What we find in this scripture is so unique. As a matter of fact, this is my life scripture. I was so thrilled when God told me to preach it because this is my favorite passage of scripture in the whole Bible. I've been standing on this scripture for the last 18 years because I believe what God has called us to do will require our detailed focus. The word of God says, that Nehemiah was on the wall. And it says, distractions begin to come to Nehemiah, telling him, come down from where you are. And has it ever dawned on you? Every distraction that comes into your life is never on the level you are. 
every distraction that enters your life, every naysayer, every objective, every adversary is never on the level you are on. It's always on a level beneath you and it's always asking you to come down from where you are. And guess what? Distraction always requires your focus. If you don't give distraction your focus, the distractions go away. I believe in this year of 2022, God is calling us to continue to climb higher. As a matter of fact, God is telling you it's time for you to level up. And when you level up, it silences the voices of your distractions. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I believe I'm talking to somebody who's tired of hearing these naysayers, and the voices of the enemy, and all these different flies and scattering voices and noises. And you have to look at them and tell them I'm doing a great work and I don't have time to come down from the work that I'm doing. God called me on this wall and if God called me on this wall, he's going to strengthen my hands to put piece by piece and brick by brick. I need 20 people to hop up on your seat and say we got work to do. I don't got time to, to lose focus and be distracted by people who don't want to advance the body of Christ in the kingdom of God. You want to know if you're doing the right thing, start advancing. You want to know if you're doing what God called you to do, start advancing the kingdom of God. And all of a sudden, it seems like all the distractions in the world come out of nowhere. It seems like all the voices begin to whisper. It seems like all the chatter begins to make noise. But here is what I learned. When you are on the brink of breakthrough, the background noise gets louder. But when you are on the cusp of receiving your miracle and, and the promise that God has for you, the background noise gets louder. And this is what I've learned. When the background noise gets louder, you got to get louder than the background noise with your praise. So I wonder, am I talking to anybody in this room or watching me online or at another location that for a moment you'll hop up on your feet and get louder than the noise that's chattering in your ear and get louder than the noise that's wrapping around your life and get louder than the distraction and say, God, here I I am we got work to do we got work to do we, we don't got time to get distracted by distraction and every single new assignment that God gives you comes with new attacks <laughs> and every single attack comes with new pain. But the pain that's brought in your life is not to cause you pain, it's to cause you to be distracted. Because all pain is distraction. And if the enemy can get you off focus while you're on your wall, he can get you to come down from where God called you to. But I believe I'm talking to some people that got their mind made up. I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down. This is my year 2022. I'm doing a great work and I'm not going to come down the lust. I'm doing a great work and I'm not going to come down to the lack of integrity. I'm doing a great work and I'm not going to come down to the level of gossip. I'm doing a great work and I'm not going to come down to the level of adultery. I'm doing a great work and I'm not going to come down to the level of, uh, of ungodly character. I'm doing a great work and I'm not coming down off the wall that God has called me to come down off of. And I believe I'm talking to some people that will stand firm firm in their position and their posture and believe in God with me that you are doing a great work and you cannot come down. Somebody shout, we got work to do. When you believe in the work that you are doing, there's nothing or no one that can distract you from the work. You believe in the assignment that God has called you to. There is nothing or no one that can deter you from the assignment that God has called you to. And I've brought myself to the place in my life where the assignment is bigger than the voices. The assignment is bigger than the distractions. The assignment is bigger than the naysayers. As a matter of fact, the naysayers would cause me to believe I'm headed in the right direction. I know I'm in pursuit of the right thing when the voices behind me get louder. Yeah. 
One of the things my parents taught me as a young boy, kings and queens don't run. They stand firm and they allow God to fight the battle for them. Stop running from what God called you to stand on. Stop running from what God called you to work on. Stop running from the assignment that God has placed in front of you. Kings and queens don't run. You are a king. You are a queen of the most high God. And God has assigned you on the wall that he put you on. And as long as God called you there, you stay put and you continue to lay brick and mortar, brick by brick, slab by slab. And you stay where God has called you and you stand until you see the mighty hand of God work on your behalf. Come on, I dare somebody to shout, we got work to do work to do. I mentioned to you last week, this will be your greatest year if it's your greatest year spiritually. In order for it to be your greatest year spiritually, you have to cut off all the noise. In order for it to be your greatest year spiritually, you have to cut out all the distractions. In order for it to be your greatest year spiritually, you got to cut ties with some people that have been holding you back. And I know it's painful because you believe they belong in your life. But everybody that was with you in your past don't belong in your present and definitely don't belong in your future. You got work to do. And as long as you keep dead weight around, it'll keep you in a position and a posture beneath the line that God has called you to live under. You got work to do. Nehemiah is demonstrating to us I can outlast the old me long enough to discover the new me. I know you met me as a cupbearer, but you'll close the end of the book looking at me as a king. I know you met me as a servant, but you're going to close the book looking at me as a leader. I know you met me one way, but that's not how you're going to leave me. That, that there's, a, there's a position and a posture and a person that God is making you into. And if you can outlast the old you long enough to discover the new you, it doesn't matter how they met you. God is making you into who it is he's called and assigned for you to be. Is there anybody listening to me right now that's grateful that God is not going to leave you how they met you, but he's making you into a king and he's making you to a queen. He's making you to royalty. He's not leaving you the same way they met you he's transforming you and transitioning you into something greater we got work to do I'm so glad that God doesn't leave me how folks met me because people judge me based off of the condition of how they met me not who it is that I am and not who it is that I'm becoming, but who they met me to be. And God is saying it doesn't matter how they met you, I'm calling you. And as long as I got a call on your life, and as long as I got an assignment on life, let them call you whatever they want to call you. I call you son. I call you daughter. I call you king. I call you queen. And I wonder, am I talking to anybody that's grateful that God always called you higher than man and woman can call you? If you're thankful, shy yes. we got work to do. The way folks met you doesn't really matter to what God is doing in you. All of us have a testimony and a story of what we used to be. But thank God he doesn't leave us like we was. He always brings us from faith to faith and glory to glory so the next time people see us, they can testify only God could have done what he has done in you. Only a savior could have saved you. Only a healer could have healed you. Only a redeemer could have redeemed you. I'm so glad. I serve a God that sees more in me than I see in myself. I'm, I'm so glad I serve a Savior that sees more in me than people see in me. I'm so glad he doesn't leave me how folks left me. But he says we got work to do. I can take this ordinary boy and do extraordinary things when you land in your assignment. See, Nehemiah was in exile. This particular day and age, 
the only people that would break free out of exile were those who believed they had something to build. There's a strategy here that I want to uplift to you. And the strategy is this. You will only break from the freedom, excuse me, from the slavery of bondage when you gain the muster and the courage to build. You will only break from the chains that are holding you back when you get the courage to advance for it no matter what. Nehemiah is in exile and he's telling the king, I have to go from here and help rebuild the wall. See, in order for the temple to be rebuilt, they had to first rebuild the wall because the wall meant that there was no security. And if there was no security, no matter how many times they built the temple or the church, there was a threat against it because there was no security wall to protect it. My concern with what we see in today's age is we're so focused on building our lives that we've forgotten to build the wall. We're so focused with building our bank account that we've forgotten to build the wall. But we're so focused to build our careers and and our families that we've forgotten to build a wall. So no matter what we build, if we don't build a wall, it's going to be attacked anyway, and it won't last. We have to stay on the wall and not come down, regardless of the voices and the, and the tactics and the weapons the enemy forms against us. We have to stay on the wall so that God could provide for us a security net for what he's called us to build. Point number one is this. It's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not that does. What could have held Nehemiah back was him understanding that he didn't come from royalty. That his lineage was not great that his father was not a king and his mother was not a queen and his father was not a priest and if he would have allowed it to hold him back, it would have. But the thing I love about Ezra Nehemiah is he had his mind made up, I don't have to be a king, I don't have to be a priest, all I have to do is be a servant of the Most High God. And I wonder, am I talking to anybody that's listening to me right now that understands I may not have come from royalty in this natural life, but my daddy's a king. And as long as I am a servant to the king, all of my needs will be met. And all that I have need of, his hand has provided. And every single door that he opens for me, I'm going to run through. And every single door that he closes in front of me, I'm going to step back and say, that ain't for me. And every single gate that swings open, I'm going to run through. And every single wall he calls me to, I'm going to stand on. I cannot come down because we got work to do. What holds you back is not who you are, it's who you think you're not. And if you listen to the voice of the enemy telling you what you're not capable of doing, telling you your lackluster ability, telling you everything that you've done in your past, you miss an opportunity to step over into a season of becoming who it is that God is designed and making you into me. I'm so grateful that my future does not look like my past and my today does not have to look like my yesterday, but God is calling me into greater. And so no matter what the enemy is calling me in my yesterday, God God is still calling me a son today. No matter what the enemy called me in my yesterday, God is still calling me a king in my today. And I wonder, am I talking to anybody that got their mind made up? I got work to do. I don't care what the enemy called me yesterday. I know who God is calling me today. And so I'm going to stay on the wall because I got work to do. I'm doing a great work and I can't come down. I'm too busy on my assignment to get distracted by the naysayers. I'm too focused on this wall to come down and entertain gossip. I'm too focused on building the kingdom of God to come down and stoop to your level. I'm doing a great work and I can't come down. I love that the scripture says they think that this is a threat to us. 
And verse 9 says, their, their hands shall be weakened from the work and that the work shall not be done. Now, therefore, God, strengthen my hands. God, my, my legs may be weak, but strengthen my hands. My mind may be tired, God, but strengthen my hands. My, my back may be aching, God, but strengthen my hands. I, I know the adversary wants to see us lose, but strengthen my hands, oh God. I love the scripture that says he always blesses the work of thy hands. I want you to go on your word to Philippians chapter 1. Verse 6, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, being confident of this very thing, he who had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I may not be talking to everybody, but I believe I'm talking to a few folk who believe God has started a good work in you. If you believe God has started a good work in you, I dare to jump up on your feet right now and lift both hands and say, God, strengthen my hand. It said, be ye confident of this. He that has begun a good work in you shall complete it. I know the enemy is trying his best to distract you, but God is going to complete the work that he started on the inside of you. Somebody shout, there's work to be done. <laughs> Sit down, I got five more minutes. Point number two is this. Don't be afraid to start again. This time you're not starting over from scratch. You're starting from experience. I need you to catch that in your spirit. If that resonates with you, I need you to shout hallelujah. Don't be afraid to start again. The wall that Ezra Nehemiah was on was a wall that was previously built and it was torn down. And so his job is to rebuild the wall to provide security for the temple. And God sent me to tell you, don't be afraid to build again. Don't be afraid to start again. Don't be afraid to try it again. This time it's going to work. I need somebody to testify with me and bump your own chest and tell yourself this time it's going to work. Don't be afraid to start again. This time you're not starting over from scratch. You're starting from experiences. You, you've learned something in this season that cannot be taught from watching others do it. You, you've learned something in this season that can only be taught through personal experience and pain. Don't be afraid to start over again. Don't, don't be afraid to build again. Don't, don't be afraid to look at what you got left and say, God, strengthen the work of my hands. I got work to do. Understand this in this particular passage of scripture, Ezra Nehemiah is coming out of exile. He's coming out of pestilence. He's coming out of a pandemic. He's coming out of a time where people were isolated. He's coming out of no man's land and he's saying to the people of God, we, we got work to do. There's a wall that needs to be built so we can build the temple of God. There's a wall that needs to be built so we can build the house of God. There's a wall that needs to be built so we can advance the kingdom of God. We got work to do. Be afraid to start again. I know you built it before and it was torn down. I know you started once and it doesn't look like how you expected it to look, but don't be afraid to start again. See, there's something significant about rebuilding. In order to build something, hear me when I say this, it takes courage. But in order to rebuild something, it takes fighting off discouragement. Don't be afraid to start again. God is going to strengthen the work of thine hands. I said, God is going to strengthen the work of thine hands. And I hear 
the Lord saying, every place your feet shall tread, I'll give unto you. And everything your hands touch, I'll cause to prosper. God strengthen the work of thine hand. Oh God, I know we may be tired, but strengthen the work of our hands. We hear the chatter, God. We hear the noise. We, we see the distraction below us, but God, strengthen the work of our hands. Because God, your word says, if you be for us, who can stand against us? Your word says that you go ahead of us and you make a way where there is no way. You provide water in the wilderness and you provide things supernaturally that we could not provide for ourselves. And so God, when we are weak, we declare you are strong. And when we can't see, we thank you that you have vision. Strengthen the work of our hands. Because we got work to do. My third and final point is this. This is my prayer for us in this season. God, give me the wisdom to know what must be done and the courage to do it. God, show me the wall that you want me to build. Give me insight on what it is you want me to do and how you want me to do it. And then God, give me the courage do it. I love that as we continue the story of Ezra Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, Nehemiah tells the children of God, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks send some to those who have nothing prepared this is a holy day to our Lord do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength the reason Ezra Nehemiah was saying this was because the wall had been finished, but they still had a house to build. And Ezra Nehemiah understood you cannot sustain sacrifice without first celebrating the work that you've already done. And I came to tell you, Celebration Church, at every moment we get, we will celebrate what God has done and keep our eyes fixed on what God is calling us to do because we have work to do. And if you believe God is strengthening the work of your hands, I dare you to jump up on your feet right now and stretch those hands towards heaven and shout unto God, make me a vessel, make me a tool, make me a utensil, make me a weapon. We got work to do. Come on, keep those hands stretched towards heaven. I feel shackles being broken in the spirit. I feel de depression being destroyed right now. Come on, it's time for you to level up in the spirit. It's time for you to go to another level. It's time for you to go a little bit higher. It's time for you to keep climbing the mountain that God has put you on. It doesn't matter what the distraction is below you. God is calling you higher. Come on, am I talking to anybody that feel like God is pulling you up higher? Yes! You say, well, pastor, how do I build? when there's distraction all around me. And I tell you the way God told me, you build brick by brick. 
I don't care how long it takes you. You put one brick on top of the other and you stay faithful to the thing God has placed in your hand. It doesn't matter who's around you. It doesn't matter what they're saying. It doesn't matter what they're screaming. You continue to stand on the wall that God has called you on and watch what God does to you. Somebody said we got work to do. Now if you believe it, throw both hands up and say yes! 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 Yes!